Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Going to be doing a pool review covering really, I'm famously cheap. Well, not famous, but my cheapness is possibly famous. So just want to cover the least expensive ways to balance your pool. That's your pH. Now, it is really important to have the pH around 7.6 on your pool because if you go too high or too low, there are consequences beyond just murky water that isn't clear. You can really dry out, crack, uh, fade your pool liner. So your pool liner will cost a fortune, especially if you're an outground, in-ground pool. Outground pools, the liners are nonetheless pretty darn expensive. So if you want to avoid major, major expenses, you'll definitely want to keep your pool balanced properly throughout the year. And going to the store, of course, often they'll give you a free test of your water. So that's great. But then you've got the really expensive products. So here we've got baking soda. This is going to be for getting the pH higher in our pool. Because right now we're a little low. And vinegar. These are the two things that are either vinegar, going to lower your pH, or baking soda. It's going to get your pH higher. Now, like I just mentioned, you really want to take care of that because you don't want to dry out your liner, you don't want to discolor your liner, and you don't want it to prematurely crack and have to replace it years sooner than you have to. Now, if you don't want to go to the store and get your free test, because of course then you're probably good, like me, going to really feel like you should buy their products, but the products are pretty expensive. The pH plus and the pH negative, a little too rich for my blood, so I like to go with the vinegar and the baking soda, and I've got my own test kit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the water, find out exactly where it is, and then I'm gonna start with putting in some baking soda and retesting until I get the correct pH. Now, of course, if you know how many liters or gallons are in your pool, that can give you a really great idea. You can do a little Google search on about how much baking soda you should require, or you can just do your own tests, make your own notes, and know for the future that when you need, for example, to bring the pH up 5.2, how much baking soda or vinegar you need for the size of your pool. So let's just get right to that. I'm gonna test the water right now. So you don't wanna just take the surface water. So you wanna cover the tops of your test kit. Get your hand right down, down to two, three feet deeper. So you really get a good idea. Get a good reading of the actual water, not just the surface water. Get up to the appropriate lines on your little tester kit. Yellow for testing the chlorine. Red for testing the pH. So four drops of each. little shake and now of course I always try to get a good reading here so I am at about 7.2 so not so bad but I want to get it around 7.4 right in the middle of the ideal zone and of course for testing purposes I want to know how much baking soda because I want to go pH up as opposed to vinegar, pH down. I wanna get my pH higher by 0.2, so I'm gonna test out so that when I've got a real problem in the pool and it's quite a bit lower, like say six or six and a half, well, I'll really be able to know in advance what I need. Now, of course, if the whole box of baking soda were to bring the pH much higher, well, I could just bring it right back down with the vinegar. So we'll give that a few minutes just to run through the entire system, go through the filter, um, because I put it right into the, the system here, so it goes straight off to the filter, because I want to find out, I want that mixing in as quickly as possible, so I can retest and see what one box of baking soda does for my pool pH. So now, real simple, just gonna retest the water because it's been 15 minutes, it's had time to circulate and see where we're at. See if we need to add baking soda or drop down the pH with vinegar.
So I'm going to add another box and see where that takes me because it didn't quite get up as high as I'd like it to be. I want it right around 7.6. And do recall if your chlorine is much too low or much too high, that can cause some problems and you're going to want to balance your chlorine possibly before trying to balance out your pH. So I've used two boxes, that's 500 grams per box, so one kilogram to get my pH up by about 0.2. So it's right where I want it. I've got it at the color that would indicate that it started actually at about 7.2 and now it's at about 7.4. Of course, it's not an exact reading, so you have to go by color and your own judgment. But I got it where I want it to be. I feel it's now not just safe to swim in, because I've got the chlorine where I want it to be, but I've also got it at a state where the liner isn't gonna be prematurely used and abused. So I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews, covering something that's not car related, because I do promise that the goal of the channel is to help everyone out so generally it's around car related stuff but this is part of you know the car budget has to be balanced out with the home budget so I'll probably do a few videos in ways that I save money uh, in order to have more money for cars so more cars and more power is absolutely the goal of the channel but if you found this video useful or if you just want to help feed and dress a poodle all you have to do is hit that subscribe button it'd be much appreciated and well we're gonna get back to our Sunday family day so we're gardening as a family today and we're gonna end the day with Winston Marie and I will all be floating the pool so we want to get to family day and of course somewhere in between all that we do have to jump on that Mustang GT and give it a full wash down get rid of every possible water stain and then we're gonna be doing a ceramic detailer to keep that paint looking pristine to give it a good protection against UV so until next time we wish you all more cars and more power and hope you have a great week take care now don't forget keep your tester kit in a dry location it's tempting to just leave it outside but you definitely don't want water getting in here uh, getting it all wet drying it out we've gone through kits too quickly before in the past so we just suggest putting it in a dry place and of course when handling chlorine or any pool products please wear a mask and goggles especially for chlorine because just recently when we we're using shock treatment so that's granulated extremely concentrated chlorine well I ended up with having just a wee bit uh, the top of the bag went in my beverage mug so now when I'm working outside that beverage mug has a top on it but I accidentally drank some chlorine and that was a horrific experience tried to do a vehicle related premiere and well was actually quite ill emptying out the stomach so avoid any trouble just this morning I worked with the chlorine I had gloves I had a mask which of course we've got a lot of those sitting around these days and I even put on my ski goggles to give me a full sealing of my face because you don't want to get powder uh, chlorine powder when you're dealing with those pucks you don't want that going into either your no nostrils your eyes or anything so please be careful play safe